Residents of a city northeast of Tokyo are cleaning after a tornado. One person died when wind swept through the area. A viewer in Tsukuba City shot this video. It shows the tornado turning through on Sunday afternoon. A 14-year-old boy died when he was trapped under a collapsed house. Strong winds also ripped through other areas. In total, 52 people were injured in the Kanto area. Nearly 900 buildings were damaged. I didn't get much sleep last night. I just have to get on with things. Residents of nearly 800 households in Tsukuba had no water. 2,500 households were without electricity. And some schools in the area have been closed for the day. An expert on violent storms says the tornado may have been one of the most powerful ever to hit Japan. Professor Fumiaki Kobayashi of the National Defense Academy says atmospheric conditions became unstable when sunny, warm air hit a cold air mass. Several of these cumulonimbus clouds swept out of the south, one after another. Each of them was capable of causing a tornado. Kobayashi is warning of more tornadoes. He says atmospheric conditions may become unstable again over the next few days. Kobayashi is warning of more tornadoes. He says atmospheric conditions may become unstable again over the next few days. The Fukushima prefectural government has conducted a surprise tsunami drill to test whether workers are prepared to handle a potential disaster. The drill on Monday was based on the scenario that a powerful quake had triggered a massive tsunami hitting the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Most of the workers were not given prior notice about the alert. Such unannounced drills were rarely held before last year's disaster on March 11th. Officials arrived at the disaster response headquarters located next to the prefectural office within 10 minutes of the start of the drill. Human lives come first. We all must work with police, firefighters and every other organization involved. Staff used emergency phones to contact the various municipalities to ask about casualties and damage to vital services and infrastructure. Monday's scenario assumed that tsunami did not damage the cooling system of the disabled nuclear plant. That's different than what actually occurred in March last year. The drill was completed after the disaster task force conveyed emergency information to municipalities. It's been more than a year since the disaster. We have to pass down the lessons we've learned to everyone who works here. An investigation into the disaster on March 11th revealed that many towns in Fukushima only learned about the emergency at the nuclear plant on television rather than from prefectural officials. For the first time in 42 years, Japan's electricity supply is nuclear-free. Power company officials in northern Japan have shut down the power output of the country's last operating reactor ahead of inspections. Officials at Hokkaido Electric Power Company shut down the power output of the number three reactor at the Tomari nuclear power plant late Saturday. Officials at power companies across the country are hoping to restart offline reactors as soon as possible. They've submitted the results of stress tests on 19 reactors to the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. Government officials say two other reactors at the OE plant in the western prefecture of Fukui meet the new safety requirements. They are trying to convince nearby residents to agree to a restart, saying it is necessary to avoid power shortages this summer. But local opposition remains strong there and elsewhere. There's no prospect of any of the country's 50 reactors resuming operation anytime soon. Ahead of the shutdown, anti-nuclear demonstrators held rallies calling for nuclear-free Japan. Get past, get past, get past. 
About 5,000 people gathered in Shiba Park in central Tokyo on Saturday. The participants carried cup-shaped banners reading no nuclear power. Cup is the symbol of Children's Day, which falls on May 5th. Two of the organizers, journalist Satoshi Kamata and author Hisae Sachi, called for unity against nuclear power. Children are being exposed to radiation following the accident at the Fukushima plant. It is more than regrettable. We won't let power companies restart the plants. We can sustain a nuclear-free society. In Sapporo city near the Tomari power plant, about 450 people held a similar anti-nuclear protest. The Japanese government is fighting back against high-tech crime. The industry ministry says it will step up efforts to recruit computer security experts amid a growing number of cyber attacks against businesses and public organizations. The ministry will launch a competition on Internet security technology this fiscal year. Its previous initiatives include organizing computer security seminars for young people, but the government will now target professionals to combat the increasingly advanced attacks. The ministry says it will study examples of so-called hacking contests held in the United States and in South Korea. Those countries are considered leaders in the information security field. May the 1st marks the start of a yearly drive to get Japanese business people to shed their suits for cooler clothing. The Japanese government launched the Cool Biz Campaign back in 2005 as a way to get public servants to reduce their consumption of electricity. It became a nationwide movement last year after the Fukushima accident triggered power shortages across the country. NHK World's Kaoru Koishibushi reports. In Nichinan City in southwestern Japan, municipal employees who are normally seen in formal business attire now enjoy working in Aloha shirts. Though summer hasn't arrived yet, a festival spirit is already here. I want to brave the summer heat in this bright shirt. It's very refreshing. In central Tokyo, many businessmen go to work without a necktie. If you look at me, you'll understand why I feel a lot more comfortable. The walls of this office are adorned with posters calling on people to conserve energy. The lights have been dimmed and air conditioners are set to 28 degrees Celsius. Conference rooms are equipped with additional fans to cope with higher temperatures. Summer may be a few weeks away, but competition among retailers to sell cool bees related goods has been heating up since mid-April. Last year, our sales rose by 30 to 40 percent, and we expect a similar trend this year. Our customers are already asking about business polo shirts. Hitting the shelves this year is a new type of shirt fitted with several reinforced pockets. It was designed in response to a problem businessmen had when they shed their jackets fewer pockets to hold their phones and other belongings. A super lightweight jacket is also available for more formal occasions. The absence of inner layers and shoulder pads makes it 50% lighter than traditional jackets. Another great hit from last year is this cooling spray meant to be vaporized over one's clothes. This year, it's back in full array of fragrances. And in some cases, products focus on blending convenience with style. This scarf for women is made from a material that keeps the neck cool. In 2011, the market for cool bees goods was valued at close to $3 billion, with authorities predicting more power shortages in the heat of summer. Demand is unlikely to cool anytime soon. Kaoru Koishibushi, NHK World, Tokyo. 
Japanese take great pride in their high-tech economy, but last year they had to struggle through the rationing of electricity, and they're worried about what might happen this summer. There are currently 50 nuclear reactors in Japan. Over the last year, those that were still in service went offline for inspections, one after another. The only one still in operation is Hokkaido Electric's Tomari plant, but it too will be shut down for regular inspection this coming Saturday. Japan's nine power companies have released their estimates for supply and demand this summer. They assume temperatures this year would reach the record highs of 2010. The estimates suggest Hokkaido Kansai and Kyushu Electric Power Companies will all face shortages. The situation is especially serious for Kansai Electric, which is the most dependent on nuclear power. A summer as hot as in 2010 will generate a power demand of 30.3 million kilowatts, but we will be 16.3 percent short. The analysts predicted corporations and consumers would contribute to efforts to save power, including the Cool Biz campaign. Demand could exceed supply if the summer turns out to be hotter than expected, resulting in blackouts. Utilities imposed planned blackouts last year to prevent such a situation. That forced many factories to curb production and had a significant impact on people's lives. U.S. pop singer Lady Gaga has put an unusual item up for auction, a teacup marked with her lipstick. The cup went for more than $75,000. Lady Gaga sipped from the cup at a news conference last year. She was promoting a concert to support areas hit by the disaster last March. She promised to sell the cup to raise money for relief efforts. She signed the cup. It also carries a message in Japanese that says, We pray for Japan. The proceeds will go to an organization established by the U.S. government and businesses to support young Japanese who wish to study in the U.S.